Why am I resistant to calling an organism a system? The simplest way of answering that question is that I'm resistant to calling any object a system. I'm much more inclined to think of systems as being aggregates. Um, so the hydraulic system of your car is an aggregate of, ma of machine parts and, and connecting parts. And it, it, it has various, f parts have various functions and various capabilities and those functions can be realized in, for instance, the, the hydraulic system working when you drive your car. Now, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, still, I'm struggling with this also. It's, so, <coughs> go back to the washing machine. Yep. Right? So the washing machine, let's say it was a hydraulic washing machine. Yeah. So it has a hydraulic system. It has a hydraulic system. So the washing machine has a hydraulic system. Why is the washing machine like not a system? Yeah, like but do you think your car is a system? Yeah, I kind of do. You kind of do. That's well, not. I don't no, hear any I mean, confidence yeah, here. I'm, I'm sympathetic to your notion of aggregate. Okay? Yeah. And the car has a lot more components, let's call them subsystems, or whatever. And so. And many of which are not functional. Uh, yeah. So, but let, let's try do, doing it from the other end. We are happy to call the digestive system a system. Well, 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 well. I was going there. Well, you okay? You go there. Because that's that's a hydraulic system of a sort within a human object. Yeah. Right. So why why do you allow that to be called a system? The same reason I allow a hydraulic system within a car object to be called a system. Because everyone calls it a system. That's my main key here. Remember, the, the idea is that the ontology should not just be an agreement about use of words. It should be an agreement about use of words, which is open to multiple communities that didn't help build it. And that's, that's what I was uh, uh, pointing out as a mistake of the Jet Propulsion Lab ontology, that it was not open to external communities, and therefore it was defeating what I take to be the main purpose of ontology, which is to preserve or create interoperability. And now all medical people talk about the digestive system, systemic diseases, cardiovascular system, and so on. And they talk about systems also on the cellular level and the molecular level. And they're inside the organism. But no medical person, and he's going to tell me I'm right now, uh, talks about the body as a system or the organism as a system. And that's partly because systems involve a function or a m m small class of functions and the, b the organism doesn't have a function <laughs> uh, it, it, except to preserve the, the genome. But what about social systems? Yeah, we do talk about social systems and they, they have the, their aggregates, they, they, they have interactions and they have s some of them at least have functions. Um, and not perhaps all of them, but some of them. Yeah? Uh, it doesn't need to have a function to be a system, though, right? For instance, the solar system. The I have agreed that you can have s things which are properly called systems which don't have functions. But remember, I said the ones I'm interested in are the ones that can have failure, and failure is defined in terms of function. So the solar system cannot fail. Well, no, I, so there must be a reason why people in m medical schools and hospitals don't call organisms systems, and they do call the digestive system a system. What's the reason? I, the, I, I assume that they have some intuition, which, which we seem to share. We don't call our car a system. The car manufacturers don't sell cars as systems. People would think that they were confusing the customer where they do sell driving systems or safety systems or uh, 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 um, hi-fi systems. It has to do with the wires connecting things together or the veins, <laughs> the nerves. That's part of it. And that may even be an important part of it. I think that one of the, the important factors is also that, that condition of ca causation, you know, that relationship between the system that causes something 
Yeah, that there causal so interaction. So it, you cannot make an organism without all those, those characteristics. So the washing machine case goes something like this. We have a washing machine which has a computer console, which is also an operating system. And to follow on with Jim's metaphor, so much of this, of this washing machine object is computer driving operating system stuff that you might just as well say the whole washing machine is an operating system for itself. Why would that be a mistake? That's the question that was raised in Washington. And I would say the, the most vocal people in the room, which were not me, <laughs> uh, thought that it would be okay to have a washing machine which was all operating system. But we don't talk about this laptop as a, as a system. We talk about it as a computer which has an operating system. That the operating system is software, that's not. OK, I'll talk about services. The idea is that there is a di basic dichotomy between commodities and services. And commodities are continuance in BFO sense, and services are recurrence. And this idea is, is it runs through national income statistics, where Commodities are under one heading and services are under another heading. And um, it, it services are assumed to be processes, but the, the problem is in understanding what sorts of processes they are. And the reason why this is here is because many of the issues that we are, we are addressing as between functions and functioning and as between systems in their latent or idle state and systems in their operational state have a counterpart in the issues which arise in connection with services. And I, th I think I can show that lots of people are confused about services. Uh, there is also a, an assumption which many people make, which is that modern economies are moving in the direction of becoming more and more dominated by service industries and less dominated by manufacturing industries. And uh, President Trump thinks that we should do something to bring back manufacturing. Now, I, I'm not criticizing Trump now. I think that the very idea that we are becoming more and more dominated by service industries is actually a mistake. These are the traditional e examples of services. So phone sex <coughs> is not on this list. Prostitution is on this list. <laughs> so these are hairdressing. And what is characteristic of all of these examples? Would anyone? like to hazard a guess. These are classical Skill services. Based hmm? Skill based but that's true of manufacturing. A, a, a carpenter, for instance. Yeah, that's the, that's the step in the right direction. But that's true also of manufacturing. So you, there is a beautiful equity here, actually. That also, but that's, that's the, the, there is also there are always an exchange of energy in some sense. That's also getting close, yes? So the, what's key about services? Let's see if it's on the next slide. So it's, we've had that. That's not good enough because there's capabilities. This is what is crucial. A service is defined by the fact that the production and the consumption are in the same place and at the same time. Now, phone sex obviously is not a very good example because the, it's usually not in the same place. But all the other examples are now. The question is, is the Western economy moving towards service economy? I think that doesn't make sense at all. How about the postal service? The postal service is not a service. Car rental service, phone service is not a service. I will explain why. <laughs> postal service is getting close, but even it, it's not clear what the Postal Service is. <laughs> uh, I mean, th service. they are... <laughs> so I write down the Postal Service. It's an interesting one. Telephone Service, I know how to deal with. I haven't thought about the Postal Service, but I will do before the end of the day. All right. <laughs> now, one consequence of this is that you can't store services and you can't rent services. You can't bank services. They, they die as soon as they're born. So that, that, that you can't rent a service. And so it's very suspicious that we have words like car rental service. All right, so you pay your monthly phone bill. And so the question is, what are you paying for? Well, a little bit might go to the phone itself, but that's, not, that's no longer necessary. 
Um, you're paying for the process of using the phone. Well, not really. I'm, you, whether you use it or not, the phone company doesn't know, and it doesn't calculate that into the, into the bill. I think what you're paying for, first of all, is the capability of the phone to receive calls. That the, the, the telephone company is providing that. But you're not consuming that. It's something that you have, I, you, you, you can rely on, but you're not consuming it really. Uh, and then of course, and this is the important one, this is where most of the money is spent, the whole telephone network. Because you can have three only if you have four. Now when you pay your phone bill, you're actually paying for a very, very tiny fraction of the whole telephone network. Which means also the maintenance costs, the engineer costs, the wiring, wireless, and everything else. That's what you're paying for. And the phone. And then everything else you get free. Now, what, to what industry or to what branch of national in income st statistics does the telephone network belong? Well, it, it's manufacturing. It was built. <laughs> You're buying a small fraction of a gigantic manufactured object that's smeared across the planet. And along with all the insurance and so on, which goes with big smeared objects. So it's not service, it's not, phone is not a service. It's a manufacturing, it's like a car. You buy a car, you rent a car, you rent a phone. You rent. Healthcare is not a service either. How, we'll come back to healthcare, so yes. Being connected to the network um, is, so when you pay for your bit of the network, you get a connection to the network. But you're not paying for that connection. You're paying for the whole network. Oh, that, yeah, that's that, that's big, it brings you number three. So you have to have number three. I, I just mean the specific case of being connected to the network. And I would think of other cases like having my mail, my mail being delivered. It would sound like a service as well. You have this production and stuff. I just want to yeah. I was thinking about that. Right. I still haven't thought about the postal service. No, but postal service. we have to remember what, where the costs are for the phone company. So the costs for the postal service include the manpower to bring the mail to your door. And that really is something that you have to pay for. And that's neither a commodity nor is it a service. Uh, it, there's a tiny service element when, if you happen to meet the postman and he smiles at you, and gives you your letter, that, that's a service. Their production consumption coincide. And so they train the postal workers to be friendly. But that's according to your definition. Give me a better definition. No, 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 this no, is the cla classical that. definition. No, this is what you find no, in the... the you yeah, no yeah, yeah. yeah. So the postal service is a hard one. Um, it, it does have a service element, but then all everything has a service element, as we will see. Uh, it's just not usually the major element. Yes, remember that we, def we that associate ontology with what is a commonly, language that is a commonly used also. So we have been using postal service yeah, I don't have a line on postal service, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> but anyway, you're right, and I accept that criticism. If, if you used a pay phone, would that be a service? No, that's, that's like renting a car. You're renting this object for a few seconds or minutes. The pay phone is manufactured. It's sitting there. You can store it. You can rent it. You do rent it. People pay 25 cents for three minutes worth of use of this r object, which was manufactured. It's like renting a car. It's exactly like renting a car. When you rent a car, you are, you are buying three days of a car rather than buying an indefinite period of time in the life of a car. Plus, slightly different insurance contracts. Yeah. Because I think that's not necessarily a service. Yeah, of I course. Agree with you on that. Yeah. I haven't said anything yet and he agrees with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For consulting, you buy three hours of consulting time. So what's the difference between a car and consulting? So this has to do with organisms not being able to have functions. And it has to do with slavery. So when you pay a consultant, you're not buying three hours of his life or three three hours of his life because that would be slavery that's what slavery is it's it's having somebody's life that in your property so slavery whether it's good or bad is commodity or service 
I don't believe in slavery. Um, slavery is treating people as commodities. And I don't believe in doing that. But we should have the microphone, because this is an interesting topic. Yep. Why? So you are not, when you rent a car, you are not buying, uh, let, me, uh, let me get this right. When you rent a car, you are buying three days in the life of the car. When you hire a consultant and you allow the consultant to provide you with valuable advice over a three-hour period, you are not buying three hours in the life of the consultant. Now what you are doing is, is consultant on my list? I can't remember. No. Yeah, it is. It is there. So consulting is a service. Yeah. So what are you doing? Um, you are um, allowing the, the, you're doing something, I'm getting lost here. Is this where we were? So what you're doing is a bit like what you do when you go to the theater and you watch actors on the stage. You, are, you have an arrangement with those people that they will perform for you and you will give them money. But that doesn't mean you treat them as commodities or buy a period in their life so that you can order them around and do with them what you will, as you can with a car that you rent within limits. You are buying their advice. You are buying the service, not the person. Where when you rent a car, you're not buying a service, you're buying the car just for three days. It's the same with renting an apartment. For example, when you use telephone service, and so called, service, yeah. uh, you cannot access all of the telephone service, everything it has in no. the system. No, exactly, exactly. So you just use part of it. Ah, no, that's, the, that's why, that's why um, this is important. You're using all of it because you want anybody that wants to reach you uh, with a phone network to be able to get to you and they that means the whole you have to have the whole network if you could only have part of it you would you would go to another uh, c company because you, you don't want telephone service where only a certain fraction of people with telephones can call you so it's the whole network and it's it's the network which is important there's nothing else which is important in the way that if you're dealing with a human being there always is something else namely his soul or whatever it might be Yeah. Because of the slavery issue. Where does, uh, where in does, in brief, yes. Where does uh, where do we employ fits into manufacturing industry, into the phone uh, industry, since we don't call it a service? Because now part of the system are employees, and employees yes. are paid by the hour or the good, work. Good. Good. Okay. Good. That's a very good question. And unfortunately, I didn't say. That, ah, yes, I did say that it was a system. So, let's just to, to um, we, we buy a month of the telephone system, the whole system, and it's, it's cheap because there are millions of other people who are helping us to buy it. They're all taking their share. Now, this is this means that the people are not part of the system and I think that's intuitively clear the people are part of the company but they're not part of the system so when I said um, the New York subway system includes people with capabilities I, that was probably a mistake. I, what I should have said was includes So what should I have said? Mm -hmm. I d is it is the manager the role maybe? <laughs> well, the capabilities are the obvious choice, but that would uh, that would mean that the su New York subway system contains railway track uh, ticket machines and so on, and then it includes what? 
the people who maintain it? No, it includes the ca capabilities of the people who maintain it. But that's ontologically very peculiar. So I, I agree. I, I, w w if, if this was a competition, I would have lost that round. No, I think it needs to be worked out. It's not we need to work it out. So are people, are people part of the telephone system? Yeah. The telephone yeah. network system, whatever we call it. That's a, a question which is interesting because of the slavery question. You, you brought that, that okay. Uh, so you brought that up. Uh, I, you don't believe in slavery. I think yeah. <laughs> but um, are you in this method, right? Or is ontology a method? We are pursuing uh, the Socratic method of building ontologies. We answer questions and then get responses. Uh, are you limiting? Yeah, I don't want a false output. I, want, I don't want an inconsistent output. I want it to be the case that you, 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 you there is a difference it. between renting a car mm -hmm. and hiring a consultant. I, I'm, I'm and if I, if I make that difference in the obvious way, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, it doesn't have to have anything to do with slavery, then I have a problem in making the distinction between renting, in making renting a car be like renting the telephone network, which is my analysis of what telephone service is really all about. But are you being uh, actually inconsistent because you know what the outcome is? We don't want humans to be things. But I don't know if you're, I, I, don't, I don't believe humans are objects, but like so I totally logically consistent. I'm trying to be consistent. I think that's a basic rule that it, otherwise this doesn't work. So there's a question at the very back. Uh, go ahead, you to explain what that would mean. So, a car can, can have difficulties with being registered. Right? Yeah. Three days in a slot. A human being can. It can be, I can go against his will. Yes, but the problem is now to compare the car with the telephone network. If there are people who are part of the telephone network, which I think, so maybe, maybe this would be a solution actually. When you what you're paying for when you pay your telephone bill is the telephone network. The telephone network is part of the telephone system. The telephone system includes people, but you're only paying for the network. And I think it's intuitive that the people are not part of the network. The network is, is machined uh, and, and engineering parts plus wires or wireless, it doesn't matter. Um, so that would be my, that would be my uh, resting place. <laughs> Yeah. My thing is that when I come here to that or I'm sitting here, I've made a decision mm -hmm. that work for the university. They I give them pieces of my life and they give me compensation for that. And that's it's an it's an agreement that exists. But you can only have that with entities that can make those decisions. Cars can't make those decisions. But individuals, people who are working for the phone company, have made an agreement that they're gonna exchange No, that's that's wrong. That's wrong. No, you're not. So when when you agree to well, that's why we have a distinction between slavery and employment. Slavery is not slavery is when you give up your life to your master. Employment is when you allow yourself to be subject to the will of your master in, for a certain period of time in return for um, uh, pay but where the will is precisely limited. You're allowed, to, you, you know exactly what you're going to be required to do. And, what the, and if the employer makes you do other things, then you can rightly yes. sue, where a slave can't do that. Right, so at some point, you use the term will, which is a very general term, but the thing is, when you're employed, you don't give up your will. You give up, a you agree to a certain kind of this that could attract you. You keep your will, you want to do the things that you want to do in order to get paid. Right, but the thing is, you don't give up your full will. You can't make people off and choose. Yeah, right. So we're agreed. Yeah. So, uh, just a quick question. The, the guy with the dark gray shirt with glasses in the front. Right? Yeah. I thought your question was, methodologically, are we creating our 
ontologies, making choices, yes. not according to meaning, but according to values? Yes. That was your that question? That was my question. Okay. So the value here is consistency and, and truth. Um, I, I maybe used the slavery card <laughs> for rhetorical purposes. Yes, yes. But that I, I, have, I could present all of these arguments without mentioning slavery. And I know, because I did it, and I can prove it, because I have a video. Yeah. <laughs> now, going back to what we pay for an employee, it's not necessarily for a chunk of our life, because the employees don't pay us just to be there and live there, but they pay us for, for a job. Yeah, for, it's like consultancy. So yeah. consultancy is employment uh, over a short period, and employment is employment over yes, a longer period. Because we still live our life. Uh, yeah. All right, so let's go on then. Um, so this, is, this comes directly to systems now. There are two kinds of commodities. So we've mentioned the telephone network as a manufactured good, a commodity, a very big one. But then there are m smaller commodities like bananas. Um, and bananas are consumable. So we, we, we destroy them basically by consuming them where the telephone network is not consumable, it survives lots of use. And it will be destroyed not because of use, but because of new designs in hardware and software. But on the other hand, there are some, some well, actually, the telephone network belongs to a whole other family of manufactured goods, which are system goods. The, the, the telephone system, the, the, the plumbing system, the water system, the sewer system, the fiber optic cable system, and so on, all of these are manufactured goods which afford various kinds of services and various kinds of activities on the part of those people who pay for them in small chunks along with everyone else. And now the point here is that these things are indeed exploding massively. And people say, oh, look, we're becoming a service industry. But we're, what we're becoming is an industry in which the manufacture of software and hardware is becoming more important. And the manufacture of traditional manufactured goods, such as clothing, is becoming less important. But it's not a move from commodities to services. It's a move from consumable commodities to system commodities. And I don't think anyone can deny that if you think about the importance of the internet. The internet is important not because the internet is a service industry. Designing software is manufacturing. Yeah. All right. So you, you can work out how it will work for renting. Um, when you rent an apartment, the service is, is the three, three minutes you spend with your landlord when she explains how much you pay and smiles and takes your money. That's the service. And then you go into your apartment and you, you have your apartment then for the month or however much you've paid for. Yes? But you cannot change the apartment. That's because of life. When you buy something, you can do permanent change. Yes. But when you rent, you cannot do any change on that. So I agree that there is a distinction here, although the cha you can negotiate changes. You wouldn't have to negotiate changes if you owned it. But even ownership does not allow any kind of change. So if you, if you buy a house here in Buffalo and you want to destroy it, you want to demolish it to make a nice garden, the, it's a, a, a complicated legal process. You can't just destroy it, even though it's your house. So it's better to say that you don't own it, actually. Ah. Okay, then I think we, w we are probably uh, in agreement. So either renting is owning for a brief period of time or owning is not really owning, it's a form of partial owning. So the, the, I think that the, the we are probably in agreement. Okay. Um, so you c if you have a service, renting is impossible. You can only buy services. You can't, you can't take rain checks on services. You just have the service three days later, that's all. So, uh, we've seen the car rental services, we've seen... Oh, let, let's, let's see this in detail. 
you pay your this was originally prepared for a Japanese talk which is why I talk about the Japanese telephone company so you pay them for a month you own the whole network for that month uh, you want the whole network to be available for use for reasons which I explain. A portion pays for your use of the network at random short intervals. And this is a service because the consumption, which is for the company almost zero, and the, sorry, the production, which is almost zero, and the consumption when you actually get the value coincide spatially and temporally. Uh, but that's a very, very small portion. It's getting less all the time. Um, so telephone service is like buying your own car uh, and television service also um, exactly the same as the telephone service except now we have actors so the, the music and theater are counted as services in the national income statistics I think this is still the case now this is fine, but the problem is that CDs, at least for a time, were counted as services. So you manufacture a silver disc and it's counted as a service industry. Why? Because the musicians didn't want to be classified under manufacturing. <laughs> so it was lobbying from the musicians union which made them reclassify CDs as a service. Now clearly CDs are manufacturing. Now, how is it with television? Well, TV actors want to be regarded as not manufacturers. But in fact, most TV production is creating products which are canned. They're videoed. They're, they're not even shown simultaneously with their production. So the product is manufactured. It involves actors, but the actors are human beings behaving. So TV production nowadays, anyway, is, is, is just like printed books and software. In the olden days when there was no possibility of recording TV programs, it was much more like the kind of service you get in the theater because there was a, a temporal coincidence. But nowadays it's mostly canned. Commodity. Hmm? Commodity. Commodity. All right. Uh, internet. It's a, it's a commodity. I, I don't even give any arguments, I just... <laughs> um, now, what's wrong with the above? What about banking? I think a bank account is a commodity. I think that bank, the, the, the so-called services which banks provide are not such that consumption and production coincides. Consumption and production coincides when you tell the bank you would like this particular service and they give you a new account with, of a new type. But then the account you have for a long time and your, your, the service component is just the few seconds when you buy the account. It's there. Uh, it's like roads. Um, okay. No. Uh, bank Banking? Banking. Banking in particular, they, they, they do define themselves as a service, uh, oftentimes internally. And because of the word you just said, commodity, because they understand that the actual thing that gives value is a commodity. Yeah. So they, they, they talk about themselves as well. The, the way we differentiate ourselves is through a service. Yeah, by having the, the more smile, more pleasant smiles right. and better carpets and, and fragrance in the, the, the quiet melody music. So is there a half type in between the two? No. The, 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 One the, or the other? The service component is one thing. That's the smiling and the, 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 the reassuring speech. And the commodity is what they manufacture, which is accounts, which are software manufacturing. They're like writing software. You write accounts. You create accounts in your system. And these accounts help the customer over a long period, even when the customer doesn't do anything or enjoy anything or know anything. But does it have to do with motivation? consumer would pick a one bank over another or leave a bank over Yeah, another. that's fine. They're all, I'll come back to that later on when I talk about car purchase, not rental. All right. Um, Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Journalists. Yeah. Yeah. Journalists. Journalism is a commodity. I, it used to be uh, newspapers. Uh, now it's newspapers plus t uh, TV news programs plus internet content. It's all manufacturing. Okay. So manufacturing now doesn't mean just material objects being manufactured. It also means information objects being manufactured. And news uh, is, ex is, is an information object, pure information object. Okay. Uh, I, I, I and then you have live TV where the pretty girls, I shouldn't really be saying these things, present the news. That's a service. Live TV is the closest they get to being a service industry. Okay. What about the databases that we use? It's also some sort of such models are available that how much you use. Yes. You pay for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Software as a service. Uh, that's that's mumbo jumbo. It's just a... Then it's not a service. Software is manufactured, and then you pay to use it bit by bit. It's rental. It's not a service. It's like car rental. It's not a service. It's a, it's it's advertising jargon. Okay, but on the basis of that software that we use, yes, to produce a service, for example, like Amazon, the Epsco host, other companies, they are using different software on back. Yes. Yes. I do, none of it is a service. They're m manufacturing something which you can then use uh, for a certain amount of money for a certain time. Um, so you can only use it for that certain time, but it exists long before and long after. And the key to a service is that the service itself coincides temporarily with its consumption. It doesn't exist before and it doesn't exist afterwards. And that is that software is never like that. Now the closest might be, is there something called Snapchat where the yeah. image disappears after? That gets close to being a service, but even there it's, uh, it's only, it's a gimmick that it disappears. They could perfectly well keep it. Yeah? Uh, quick for you. So get the microphone first. Okay. It until later. Sorry. But the haircut, under the, hang on, let me, let me, uh, under the definition I gave, a haircut is a classical service. So you, the consumption of the haircut is sitting in the barber's chair while the barber cuts your hair, and the production is the barber cutting your hair. So they're the same event. The, the situation I'm describing is one where you pay $20 on the first of every month. Yeah, I know, I know, that's irrelevant. What, how you pay is irrelevant. What the uh, important question is what, the, what you're paying for. And so if ephemeral exchange comes to mind, hmm? to the phrase ephemeral exchange comes yeah, to mind. Yeah, that's right? that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this thing is used up. In exactly. Times, yeah. Right? But now we need to keep mi track of the microphone. Uh, well, I was just okay. Even if you're just going to agree, we still have to get you on record. <laughs> Ah. That's, that's what I okay. So. Okay. Okay. Let me. Yeah. Uh, let me think about that one. So this sounds to me a little bit like insurance. Um, are you p ha happy with comparison with insurance? So the reason you do this is because you want to know. You want to be assured that you will get the barber's attentions, his services when you need them and that you might, you will not be left in, in By buying uh, six car wash and, uh, for the price of five. Yeah. When you go to the aircraft, you don't do it to just have it at the same moment. I'm you coming to that. I'm coming, I'm, I, I, that's what, I'm coming back to that point. I think I agree with you on that. I'm, I want to bring that in later because it's, it's, so counterintuitive, but we'll see why. Okay, any more? Um, so we've seen that, we've dealt with that. 
Um, now we come to insurance services, protection services. Um, let me just see. So what, what do you buy when you buy insurance services? Well, you buy um, a piece of paper, which is manufactured. And that piece of paper uh, makes a promise to you. And that promise is that if X, Y, or Z happen, then you will receive uh, monetary recompense. That's the simplest case. Now, that's clearly not a service. Uh, because you're not consuming anything, you're, the, the, you're paying for protection, risk protection. And I believe that that is properly to be regarded in the, under the same heading as, as buying software. So you buy an information artifact which has been created like any other information artifact. It's valuable because it gives you an assurance, a guarantee that if such and such things happen, you will be rewarded. Uh, in such and such a way. It's, it goes hand in hand with gambling. Um, so, so it's not a service. Now there is a service element to gambling, but the, the, that's another uh, it, the nice alcohol and so on. Everything that goes hand in hand with that. Um, and then protection services. So what is the army or the police force? Actually, can we go back to this insurance? Yeah, please. Microphone. What, what we buy when we buy insurance, we put money in a pool, which is all the people who pay insurance. Yeah. And that pool, as long as that pool is there, yeah. it's not just the agreement, then the insurance will take from that pool and cover any risk that happens to individual members. That's, a, that's the old fashioned way. Of, that's oh, the, 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 the pre. In, that's the prehistory of insurance. I'm sure there are still many insurance companies that work on roughly those lines, but there are more sophisticated ways of w dealing with insurance. You can have reinsurance. So well, you I'm can. To say that these things really exist. Oh, I know, I know, this but they're not the only. That's not the. They have to have yeah, yeah. That, so yeah, yeah. You buy into that as well. Yeah. So there are the, but that the way you pay for insurance and the way the insurance company pays you back in cases in cases where it's required to pay you back, is not essential to deciding what insurance itself is. And it is gambling, because, like gambling, a little bit, because how, you, how much you are willing to pay into the pool depends upon your risk assessment. If the pool requires more than you think the risk is worth, you won't join the pool. Yeah. And that's the same however the insurance company finances its activity. So you are saying it's not a service? Yeah. yeah it, you're, buying, you're buying a piece of paper which it gives you a certain right to a certain uh, under certain circumstances to a certain reward. Yeah, it's not. I, I would just say more than that. I agree with you, but I'm also adding that more than a piece of paper is also the money actually that goes. Ah, ah. So you're a very trusting type, I see. No, no, no. I'm saying <laughs> that things are. I know, I know, I know. But let's say there are ten thousand people who pay in, and let's say five thousand of them get sick in a really horrible epidemic so that there isn't enough money to pay all of them. That's still going to happen even under your scenario. Sure, sure. Yeah. So maybe you need the insurance company to be insured. And they are. Uh, they are. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so protection services, the army or fencing or police are not services. You're paying for the damn fence. It's a manufactured good, and the army is not quite a manufactured good, but the, it's, a, um, it's not a service, it's a system. It's, it's a material system, an engineered system involving human components and material components, uh, and forts, and aircraft, and all the other things which protect us, and similarly for the police. The important area where we still need to do some work is in terms of buying and selling. I said everything, insurance, gambling, um, police, uh, banking, rental, car rental, home rental, they all involve a service element because you always go to the landlord or the agent of the insurance company and you make a transaction. That's a service. That there, the consumption, which is the 
enjoyment of the transaction both in the sense of its value innately because you're having an exchange with a human being and in the sense of what you get out of it later namely being insured or being protected they are they are classical services but they're a tiny tiny fraction of the the payment that you make so the, the I, I should this here so this is how you buy a BMW in I think it's Korea and it's next to the Chanel perfume store. And it, the BMWs you buy here are a bit more expensive than the BMWs you buy uh, in Buffalo, let's say. <laughs> um, and that's service. That's nice carpets, nice fragrance. Um, OK, now let's go back. Now, the value of a commodity like a car depends to a small amount but still a signif statistically significant account on the se setting in which it's per bought so this this place it doesn't just give you pleasant ambiance it also gives you a certain assurance these people are honest they 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 know what they're doing L look how successful they are where if you go into some back street and buy a BMW which is only through 30 percent of the normal price then you might not be so sure that you're doing the right thing um, so th this is an important distinction buying and selling for a commodity is a is a diff is a component of, of the cost you pay but that component is a function of the purchase place where the value or the price of a service doesn't depend on where you pay it depends on where you get the service so if you pay for your barber monthly by check that doesn't influence the value or price of your haircut the value or price of your haircut is influenced by where it happens and who does it and how skilled that person is so, um, so the, it's the place of delivery which, de which determines the price of a service. It's the place of sale which de determines, in part, a very small part, on the, um, for, for in the case of a commodity. And, of course, the main part for a commodity is where it's manufactured. But there is no other place where a service is manufactured other than the place of delivery. Okay, now... And here we get back to capabilities. You go to this barber because this barber has a, a he is a very capable barber, the good barber. And you pay for that. Not all way. Well, then you're, I'll tell you which barber to use. Um, and this is like art. So every haircut is unique. That's the idea, anyway. Um, and and it's like art because this. I mean art in the sense of ballet or something You're, it, it's the performance which is important so it's not the result however there is a result and this is coming back to your point now the result of the haircut is a pattern on your head now that's a product uh, it sounds almost like a commodity it survives but it's not uh, the, the reason why this is not attractive so just before you come in because I think you find it attractive the reason why this is not as attractive as, a, as an argument against my view is because you can't store the pattern, you can't sell it, you can't rent it, it it's stuck to you <laughs> uh, in a very real sense. And so uh, it's not, it's not a, a true commodity. Yeah. Oh, but you can. you can. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Only you can only sell it for the remaining. You can you can sub rent it uh, within reason anyway, providing you don't go beyond the rental period. Yeah. Yes. Okay, that's an interesting question. So, um, of course, it is a product. Uh, the, the, but the, the, the issue is, do you color your hair or does the barber color your hair? 
Okay, does the barber cut your hair and sell it to someone else, or do you cut your hair and sell it to someone else? Cut and I sell. Okay, then it's a commodity, you're selling it. No, no problem. It's the pattern you can't sell. Now, you could take a photograph of the pattern, or he could, and try and sell this as a new style for hair, but that's, that's not selling the pattern on your ha head, it's selling a pattern which has been instantiated on your head and which he will instantiate for a price on someone else's head. Although, it would have to be a head which was similarly shaped to yours. Uh, um, another question. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that you can sell Yep. Does that now become a commodity? So that's, that's interesting. I think now we're getting to restaurant food service, um, McDonald's. Um, so the price of, of a good steak in a restaurant is much higher than the price of a McDonald's hamburger because a good steak in a restaurant is like a good barber. Um, and the, the, as the barber tends and cossets your hair, so the chef tends and cossets your stomach, something like that. And uh, the result is you feel good in your stomach, as it were. Just the result is you look good on your head. Um, now, there is always going to be a real service component. Even in McDonald's, they still have human beings who take your money. Not for long, probably. Um, so, how do. So let's suppose we have machines running restaurants and machines running barbershops. No, no human engagement. Is that manufacturing or service? I think it's, first of all, there is a greater manufacturing element because instead of human beings serving you, you have machines and those machines have to be built, designed, uh, maintained and so on. So there is a greater manufacturing component, but there is still a service component even for the haircut and the food delivery because you don't say that a service is when consumption and production by a human being coincide. You say it's a case where consumption and production coincide and the production can be my own machine. So I guess we're back to phone sex. Um, so that I, I'm assuming that there are machines where you can go for all kinds of things <laughs> which people enjoy, I'm assuming. So the machine producing the service is not crucial. All right, so let's see how far we've got. Um, so when, I think this is the important thing for the systems question, when we think we're paying for a service, we're nearly always paying primarily for infrastructure. So things like, so that the, the car rental company has to do all kinds of things with insurance and, and sales, which the automobile sales company doesn't have to do so much of. They only sell once. The rental company sells every three days, which means that there's a lot more invested in the service side, but the service side is still minuscule compared to the manufacturing side. And the same applies to telephone and transport. And I guess here I should really deal with the postal service. Um, so the postal service, what do you pay for when you, well, do we pay, we pay in tax, uh, stamps? I sent a letter once. Um, so we pay for a stamp. What do we get for our stamp? Well, it's obvious. We get all those vans, all those white vans, all the dry, skilled, dry, capable drivers of those white vans, all those storehouses and trucks connecting the storehouses, all those planes, and they, they're moving around all the time. We're paying for all of that, which is, it's, it's more than manufacturing because they're moving around. And I guess we pay for that moving around. And a little bit of the moving around is bringing the, um, bringing it to our mailbox. But it's not a commodity. Actually, it's an interesting case. It's neither a commodity nor is it a service. It's not a commodity because of all the moving around. And it's not a service because the consumption and the production don't coincide. We find the letter in our mailbox where we've been asleep while all the moving around was taking place. So it's a uh, postal service is a hard one. Um, no, even 
Uber would make it challenging for you. Yes. Uber? <coughs> That's another little change in terms of... Yeah, I, let me just... Um, yes. Um, so, I feel like there's a distinction here, and I can't help the public service case, at least in my own mind, between a service and the promise of a service. Actually, the promise of a service is going to be a commodity. It's going to be the yeah, it's like an insurance, like insurance. insurance. You get a piece of paper. So, the postal service case, it strikes me, initially it seemed like, oh, that's, that's a service, but as we talked about this more, it seems like that's going to be this like promise of a service. There's some document somewhere that promises me that my mail is going to get delivered. Yes. Taxes and stamps and everything else. And so that it seems to me that you're you're buying this commodity or you're contributing to the existence of this commodity. I this, see. This, I uh, see. This promise in the form of a document created by some document act at some point. Um, similar with the subscription to haircuts. So I I think that your on the right track and it makes postal service and telephone service comparable also because the, the postal service is where you're buying the reassurance and the capability that you will get calls which people want to make to you right. so it's 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 not even receiving calls it's knowing that you are available to receive calls which is the valuable thing and I guess that there's something of equivalent value in the postal case the uh, the problem and I'm saying all along that how you pay for something is not salient but in fact I think here it might be uh, the problem is that you in in a a well-organized postal system you would pay for delivery I would pay for the things I want to have delivered to you and you would pay the things you want to have delivered to me and so That's different from the telephone for, for technological reasons. Now, telef telephone transmission costs practically nothing. The network costs a huge amount, but the transmission is almost zero. Where in postal uh, case, the, 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 tra the transmission of the individual item is still a considerable cost. And that means that we can't rely on the general guarantee as being the element which we're really paying for, it seems to me. Oh yeah, I agree. That is a component. I agree. So I I'll write that down too. Okay, next. Okay. The, the production and trans yeah. The of the yeah, but now you're actually lending weight to his thesis because would you give money to some courier who knocks on your door and says, have you any valuables you want delivered? <laughs> no, you'd only do it if you had some reason to trust this courier and that's why we have the postal service and all the uh, trust building uh, mechanisms that they use so that we have faith that they will deliver. In Italy, on the, on the other hand. <laughs> but I would, I would see a neighbor to carry it down the street. That wouldn't be... So actually, this, this, this raises another point which I haven't thought through, but there is, in the word service, a, a, a slight element of meaning which points in the direction of being available reliably for you. And I think that's the difference in the neighbor or the courier case and the postman with the uniform case. Although they don't wear uniforms anymore and they're not only men. But other than that. <laughs> All right, I'll continue for a bit longer. Uh, so this is the gardening would be a commodity industry if the haircut pattern case goes through. And teaching. So when I teach, I am creating the commodity which is a new pattern inside your head. <laughs> and uh, the dentist is the same, only there it's the teeth. 
So hair cutting and gardening and teaching and dentistry and tailoring and gym uh, ser fitness services, they're all manufacturing patterns. And I don't know how this comes in here. That's it. That's the end. We end with the dentist. Healthcare. I was going to deal with healthcare. Yes. Now that comes under the aircraft maintenance ontology. So let me try and do, deal with he aircraft maintenance healthcare. So we. Um, um, well, let me see if I can find the relevant slide. Here we are. So we. Um, Oh, no, that's, that's not right. No, I'll have to speak rather than point to slides. So I am a, an aircraft wing. And aircraft wings get cracks at regular intervals, and they have all kinds of X-ray equipment and, and methods to detect these cracks early so that they won't become bigger in flight. And so they have a, an entire diagnostic service, as they say. And then they have an entire maintenance uh, procedure so that they can test wings, identify cracks, repair cracks, and, so, and then write reports on the repairs that they made and so forth. Now, if you have a production process, you have raw material, which is the input, and you have the product, which is the output. If you have a maintenance service, you have the product, which is the input. What is the output? It's something like a maintained product, a product as maintained. Or restored. Yeah. Or restored. So now healthcare. You are a human being. You are produced through various processes involving your mummy and daddy. You you are produced and then you, you go through life and then you begin to show cracks and so you go to the doctor who does x-rays and various other things and then performs a maintenance procedure and then you are the input of the maintenance procedure and you as maintained are the output of the maintenance procedure now is maintenance a service industry or a commodity industry What's your answer? So, <laughs> so what is healthcare? Economic. Yeah, right. Activity. Yeah. But there is also, though, I was thinking of, as a, we went through this discussion, uh, that do, could you have a, 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 a situation where actually is a little bit of. Jim, would you pass me the mic, please? Oh, sorry. <laughs> could we have some instances where actually is a mix of both? Yeah, as I say, they're all a mix. Yeah. So in, you go to, well, I'm not sure about the aircraft wing, but you go to the hospital and you expect to be uh, welcomed by a friendly receptionist. And then you expect to be taken to the, the b clinical ward or lab by friendly uh, assistants. And then you expect the person who uh, uses, uh, operates the machine to be friendly and smiling. All of that is service. All those smiles and nice carpets and clean yeah. and so forth. That's the service I element. We cannot use this discussion to come up with a generalization of something that is much more complex than a, a terminology representation. So I, I, I w wish I had prepared myself for your question. I do think we can say more about what healthcare is by viewing it through the lens of commodity versus service and by comparing it to what happens in other industries with maintenance. And so an example would be this. So you go to the barber to have a new pattern on your head. You go to the uh, surgeon to have a new pattern of your kidney, let's say. But you might go to the surgeon to have an uh, entirely new kidney or maybe a, a, a plastic uh, 3D printed kidney installed. And that really is manufacturing. Yeah, it's a, I'll give you just one example where these things become really relevant. Uh, for example, physicians do not charge. It's not a billing call yeah. for a multidisciplinary conference. So you have a 
went into position to get in a room and, and come up with the care plan. Yeah. There is not a way to build for that. Right. And so these things are really critical. To so the plans are manufactured and they, they should be valued as manufactured yes. objects. You come up with a care yeah. plan that you have to review. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You have to keep. So, one of the uh, ideas which I'm hoping I will have time to realize at some stage is to create a new view of what healthcare is under the heading document driven healthcare. And this would throw a positive light on what is now regarded as being a pain in the neck, all these documents. If you view the documents correctly, they bring benefits. And if you view them correctly, you will not have too many documents. You'll just have the right amount of documents. Yeah. None of them having any mistakes. Mm -hmm. Just a, a follow-up question on healthcare. I, so I mean, you're saying treatment is a commodity, but diagnosis seems like a service to me. And, and also a no, that, that, that exactly along his lines. The diagnosis is a manufacture of a. A, a, a document. It may be a, a identifying what the disease is, maybe already putting forward a treatment plan. So you're creating something of value, it's manufacturing. Yes, and, and, and in fact, you have to give it to the patient in writing now uh, as one of the requirements. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's maintenance plan. Yeah, no, but, the, but and this is actually more than philosophical. Oh, I know, I know. I'm. So it's really I'm not. Th when I'm talking about aircraft wings, I'm not doing philosophy. Oh, I know you are. <laughs> but also interesting. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So Everything is, is a you know? no. I'm, I, when I say that it's important that you are treated in a friendly way when you go to the hospital, I think that that is important. I mean, it, it's also important for the to achieve the purposes of the hospital, no, and I'm sure you agree with that. Yes. Just to give you a good feeling about yourself. So why it's uh, you know, it is a pattern that you get and the reason that you get is to have a good feeling. So why it's different from Okay, good. All right. So I uh, this is an interesting extrapolation which even I would not have dead. So <laughs> you're saying that even the smiling sales lady who sells you a new BMW is manufacturing a pattern inside your head of feeling good. Now, actually, I think she pro that's her job. That's, she's required to do that because the more she succeeds in doing that, the more she'll sell. So she gets paid by the, by the degree of friendliness that she can achieve. Um, so maybe there is no service. <laughs> it's all manufacturing of neuronal patterns, documents, and BMWs and and 3D printed kidneys. Actually, you have to be careful in making that argument because next time you go to the barber, he will charge you five hundred dollars. Why? Because of the good feeling he gives you, <laughs> <laughs> which lasts for weeks. Yeah. And so we're, we're being consistent, but if we're getting all these, to most people, unintuitive results over what these things are, like to call them a commodity rather than a service, isn't that like reason to say go back to the drawing board? Yeah. We yeah. So I regard this 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 is why I didn't put it into the main part of the lecture. This uh, service business I regard as being. Um, speculative rather than descriptive ontology. But I would defend it 
along the following grounds. I think that the core of it, which I didn't deal with in detail, but I, there is a video where I do deal with it in detail, has to do with the way in which information artifacts are becoming more and more important in our economies. Making information artifacts, which means manufacturing information artifacts of all kinds, including information artifacts about information artifacts. And insurance is just one area, but there are many other areas. Now, that means that our um, current established meanings for words like commodity are no longer in sync with the actual realm of what is manufactured. And so there's going to be a mismatch between the standard uses of words and the uses of words which an ontological analysis seems to require. And more generally, I would say in defense of some of these views anyway, not the haircut pattern view, uh, but the, um, uh, the view that haircut, um, the, the, the view that um, telephone is not a service. The general defense of that view is that the official definition of a service is an economic good for which production and consumption coincide. You can find that in perfectly standard places. It's not something that I made up. And what's the activity with car rental? I'm sorry? What's the activity with car rental? The activity with car rental? Yeah, so if you're going to save car rental service to be a correct phrase by saying that services relate to activities, what's the activity with car rental? It's a three minute smile and a signing of a document. What if I avoid that one and go to a case like haircutting or Hair cutting, we agree. Hair cutting, our, hair cutting is a service. I'm, I'm I'm sticking to that. I, uh, I embrace the peculiar extrapolation which says no haircutting is manufacturing patterns on people's heads because the patterns cannot be stored or rented. So they're not commodities either. That's, that's why I don't go along. And similarly with the nice feeling in your heart when you welcomed in the hospital. You can't sell that either. You can't bottle joy. Okay, this is going to be the last remark, so it yeah. better be a good one. <laughs> Store and rent. Uh, or rent. Uh, for example, uh, in this case, you must have something that you know lasts forever. No, it could, the storage means so for. Yeah. I would say that means it's even less able to be stored, so it's even less like a commodity. No, no, I think being able to be stored or, and rented are actually a very clear, but created clear dichotomy between those things which can be stored and therefore rented and those things which cannot be stored and therefore rented. It's, a, it's, a, it's not fuzzy. I don't think I can. Okay, so thank you all very much. I hope that was somehow helpful. Oh. Thank you. I enjoyed it. <laughs>